Welcome to the Global Gaming Business Podcast, the industry's first and longest running podcast now in our 17th year. I'm Roger Gross, the publisher of GGB, and this week we feature a discussion with Jennifer Tagliati, the chairwoman of the Nevada Gaming Commission, on her appointment as the first woman to head up the commission and what it means for her and the industry. This program is sponsored by Konami Gaming. Later in the show, we're talking about a Konami creation that keeps reaching more and more properties year after year, so stay tuned. Welcome to the Global Gaming Business Podcast. Our guest today is Jennifer Tagliati, the new vice, the new uh, chairperson for the uh, Nevada Gaming Commission. Uh, Jennifer, thanks for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, and congratulations on being appointed. You, you, you're, uh, you. What was that? About two months ago. Yeah, it was um, mid October. Okay, great. I was appointed. Great. My first meeting was in November. Great. So, uh, was this a surprise uh, that that they reached out to you, or, or were you kind of looking for for uh, an appointment? Uh, no, I, it, it it wasn't a surprise because I applied. Okay, um, I applied online for the opening um, that was created when uh, Chair Moran announced his retirement. And there's a process to make the application, to express your interest online, and I I did that. Um, and I was lucky enough to be appointed. Great. Well, you know, you've had a, a long and distinguished career as a Nevada District Court judge. Uh, you know, you, you served as chief judge for three years and then president. Four years. <laughs> oh, four years, right. And then president. Just, a hundred dog years, but okay, yes. <laughs> right, right, exactly. It must have seemed that long anyway. So, and then President Trump nominated you for a post on the U.S. District Court in, in 2019, but that never went through, even though both Nevada senators supported the nomination. What, what happened there? Well, I mean, obviously, I can't speak for Senate leadership as far mm -hmm. as who they uh, put to uh, put on the uh, for a vote. Sure. Um, I made it all the way through the process. I went through several years of being vetted, being deemed well qualified by the ABA, having the support of our senators from Nevada, having an, um, been nominated twice by the White House, by the president. Um, but I think I think. You know, politics has a role in everything, right? Yes. And okay. so um, these days, everything is very polarized. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'd like to think that that it didn't have as much to do with me as it did with um, party politics. Sure. I will say this. I was about as apolitical as a nominee can get mm -hmm. um, because I had been on the bench, the state court bench for so long sure. that there were no there was no history of political ideology that mm -hmm. was reflected. I, I don't think in any of my rulings or um, my professional life. And so, you know, maybe that played a role. Maybe it didn't. Right. Right. So how, how do you think your, your judicial experience uh, will prepare you for your, your new position here? Well, I think it, it helps quite a bit. I mean, I have, you know, over 20 years of experience assimilating a significant amount of information and trying to drill down into the issues um, that that need to be addressed. And I'm used to making hard decisions. I'm used sure. to um, I'm used to knowing that not everybody's going to leave happy all the time, at least in a courtroom, right? I mean, I used to call it, you know, it's a good day if 50% if of the people are unhappy um, and a typical day if everybody's uh, unhappy. And, and yeah. so, you know, you get you develop a, a, a an ability to kind of set aside um, white noise, if you will, sure. and and focus on the issues at hand and make the best decision you can, um, having reviewed all the information and and so that's something I've been doing for you know twenty plus years. Right, great. So, gaming law and, and regulations are, are sometimes unusual, or quirky. You know, what what have you done to prepare for for your new role here? Well, I've done a few things. I've had an opportunity to uh, speak with some previous chairs, and I have um, plans to speak with some of the other previous chairs um, just as soon as I can get schedules coordinated. Mm -hmm. I've watched prior meetings. I've, um, you know, um, the, the briefings on these issues are significant. The investigations, you know, I'm used to reviewing investigative materials. Sure. I was a deputy district attorney for years before I was a judge. And so, you know, the, the investigations of the divisions of the Gaming Control Board are very thorough, at least right. based upon my month of experience, month and a half. And so I think that's really helpful. Um, and so, um, you know, 
I mean, these are the things that I'm doing, you know, and it's going to come with time as well and commitment, basically. Right. Absolutely. So you just mentioned the Gaming Control Board. You work closely with them. Uh, they're the investigative branch, but the Gaming Commission has the has a really the final say on, on licensing and regulatory issues. What has what your experience been so far in, in the relationship between these two agencies? Well, I've had the opportunity to um, observe their um, investigation work mm -hmm. of their agencies and to watch their meetings um, I do think it's interesting that, that a lot of times they ask questions that I'm wondering about. <laughs> so that's right. helpful. Um, you know, I, I don't have occasion to have had direct contact about any one particular in issue. I think mm -hmm. they're very careful about um, open meeting laws and, and, you know, the independence of the commission. Um, and they're respectful of that and mindful of that as am I. Um, but so far um, my, my experience has been very positive. Okay, great. Well, it, and, it, and it needs to be because you you do work closely together, and uh, you know sometimes you, you might not agree with what they say, but uh, but I think uh, that having that good relationship is very important. I agree. So there's been some recent requests from the gaming industry to ease the path of cashless transactions in gaming and to allow remote registration, which is permitted in almost every other gaming state. Why do you think it has taken so long in Nevada to approve this change? You know, that's, that's a good question. Um, I was part of the observers group at uh, the um, working group that they had on this issue. I think, um, you know, there's a history there that I'm going to have to become more familiar with as this issue, before this issue comes before the commission. Um, my guess and my um you know, my assumption is that there's um, concerns about the integrity and controls and, and, and precedent. I've noticed that our board is, you know, and, and this is really important when you come from a judicial background, right? Sure. Lawyers and parties expect uh, similarly situated persons and issues to be treated the same, right? Blind as to who the parties are, blind as to what the politics are. You treat people who are similarly situated the same. So they're, they already seem to me, based upon a month and a half, uh, two months, to be very, very mindful of the precedent setting effect of everything they do and everything they recommend to the commission. Sure. And so, you know, I'm going to have to get up to speed on the history of it, uh, but, but I am mindful that that's a concern for them going forward. And so, you know, I don't know exactly which board members were on the board when this has sure. come up over time. But um, I have no doubt I'll be fully informed. They're very thorough in what they do. Great. So, you know, a lot of issues that come before regulators in Nevada are really technology driven and, and, and quite complicated to understand. You know, I'm immersed in the industry every day and it takes me a while to understand some of this stuff. So how do you drill down to the, to the, uh, the nuts and bolts of the issue before you in, in any situation? Is the onus on the applicant or, or, or do you really, to make, make it easy for you to understand or, or uh, do you get most of that from the Gaming Control Board investigation? Well, I, I would say for based upon my experience thus far, the onus is on Jim Barbie, <laughs> who's yeah, the right. chief of the technology division, right. to make sure that the members of the board and the members of the commission um, understand the technology. Um, you know, I've had an opportunity already to meet with him, um, get a, a presentation of what his division does, um, you know, what their work assignment and work models look like, how they drill down into these issues, um, new technology, how they break up the work flow. Um, I think, you know, as with any state agency, they do as much as they can with the resources they have. I know they have some open positions. Um, and, you know, I was asking about that. You know, I, I, I can imagine they're not easy to fill just based upon the nature of the work and it's pretty specialized. But um, I think he... Um, He's very responsive and has indicated to me that any questions I have at any time, um, but again, the presentations that come with these proposals are very thorough. And so thus far, I haven't had um, major questions that couldn't be answered. Okay, great, great. Konami's award-winning Synchros is the casino management system of choice for some of the industry's most innovative operators. 
Many have chosen Synchros in recent years. Operators like Rivers Casino in Pennsylvania and New York, Desert Diamond Casino in Arizona, Golden Entertainment, 10 casinos across the U.S., Carnival Corporation and Norwegian Cruise Lines, Las Vegas' newest strip mega resort, Resorts World Las Vegas, and it was selected by the nation's largest casino on the West Coast with over 6,500 slot machines and an amazing new resort hotel. To start speaking with the Konami team about Synchros and why so many casinos are choosing it, visit konamigaming.com slash connect. So we're publishing a column in our January issue by, by uh, Anthony Cabot, uh, one of the premier gaming attorneys in Nevada and uh, a fellow at the Boyd Law School at UNLV. Uh, he he, he uh, charges that the state regulatory agency uh, really failed to address the issues of problem gambling and responsible gaming, you know, in, in any real uh, capacity. You know, and obviously you bear no responsibility here because you just took office. But are you are you prepared to look into the issue and make changes if you think it's necessary? Well, I'm very interested to read his article. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I would, I would be curious as if he has spoken to the um, Committee on Problem Gambling, the advisory committee, anybody mm -hmm. on that committee, Kim Garcia or the chair, I don't know, because I haven't read the article. Sure, right. um, but, you know, in, in getting familiar with some of these issues, you know, I, I looked at their, you know, previous last three meetings in 2021, July, and September, November, you know, they've been addressing issues like research grants, gamb uh, gambling treatment diversion court, which I'm very familiar with from my days as a judge, um, sure. prevention and integration projects for substance abuse technology, um, all kinds of things. And so, you know, they're tasked under NRS 458A to, you know, even consider regulatory um, uh, regulations, excuse me. So sure. I guess, you know, as I go on in this position, I'm going to be, um, you know, I've already reached out to Kim Barcia, who I mm -hmm. understand is, is kind of the go-to um, person on, uh, for the committee to, to see if she would talk to me and perhaps give me some insight that I can't glean from minutes and agendas. Um, sure. But, but I guess I'll be, I'll need to read his article. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think you'll you'll find it, you know, uh, revealing. Uh, you know, I I knew a lot of this, but uh, but he really lays it out in, in a in a cohesive manner and, and suggests some some possible cures for it too. So I think you'll be interested in that. So you mentioned the uh, the diversion court. Uh, I had the opportunity to interview uh, Judge Moss uh, uh, when she first took over, and and very impressive uh, program that that she set up there, and now it's it's continuing on. And uh, do, do you think that's a really important uh, issue that that the 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 uh, you know, that the judicial branch has really uh, gotten a grasp on that? You know, I think there has been from the time before me, bef years before I was chief judge. So I, I, st I take zero credit. Okay. But, but I will say that it's been an, it's been a consistent and um, significant priority of the court to maintain those treatment courts, whether it's drug court, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, the gambling court, um, DUI courts, you know, these are, these are absolutely crucial mm -hmm. to, to our community as far as, you know, um, whether it's DUI court and you have, you know, hardworking people who have jobs, but have an alcohol problem and they have, um, an offense that limits their ability to get a job to, to function. Um, you know, what these courts bring as far as services to the participants is incredible. And so, yes, 100%, I support all of those courts. I did when I was there, I did when I was chief, I did as a senior judge, and I do now. Right. And it's great to see uh, see Judge Moss uh, helping other states now set up these kind of things. I know she's working in New Jersey and, and New York and Pennsylvania with their regulatory agencies to, to see if they can set that up. So I think that that's a really good thing for the industry as a whole. Yeah, she's worked very hard. Um, and, you know, she deserves uh, the recognition for it because, quite frankly, it's kind of a thankful task, t thankless yeah. task yeah. <laughs> as far as, you know, specialty courts. You know, when you become a judge, that's not what you're <laughs> when you're it's not the first thing that comes to your mind. Right. right. And right. so um, so it's somebody that really has to have a passion for it to undertake that uh, docket yeah. and that work. Yes. And, and she certainly does. 
So you're the first woman to hold the position of, of, a, of chair uh, with the Gaming Commission. What does this mean to you? And, and do you think it gives like added responsibility to, sh to show women that they can do any job uh, in the industry? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think, I think, first of all, it's, it's, you know, I've said it, it's one of the great honors of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, there's, a, you know, I've, I've even been asked by other media persons, isn't this a, you know, male dominated world? whether it's the patrons or the, or the regulators or the industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I made a joke that I would, had gone to a Raiders game <laughs> that weekend. And my guess as I looked around at, at these women is that, <laughs> that plenty of them have played spats. Yeah. Um, and I was just joking, but, but, you know, it, I think, you know, it's crucial uh, that, that, that I do everything I can to, to kind of, to be to pave the way to be the sure. first in this position um and and show that it doesn't matter woman man doesn't matter um it's the work it's the commitment it's the uh integrity yes and so that's that's kind of how i feel about it great great well i think it's a impressive uh, uh position you're in now and i think you're gonna you're gonna be able to really uh, uh be a role model for a lot of women in the industry so so you know again congratulations on Thank being you being named the chair and and uh, we look forward to to uh talking with you again maybe maybe a year from now after you got get some time under your belt and, and you can really yes. uh, let me have it then right <laughs> okay great <laughs> thank you so much i appreciate great. it thanks again to konami gaming head to konamigaming.com slash connect to start speaking with konami's top synchros representatives about your 2022 technology goals to learn more about gaming technology, visit ggbmagazine.com. To get all the news of the gaming industry delivered to your desktop every Monday morning, sign up at ggbnews.com using the code GGB180 for a free subscription. Don't miss a single episode of the podcast. Sign up on Apple Podcasts or Spotify today. So we'll see you next time on the GGB Podcast.